Studio 54 is a former nightclub and currently a Broadway theater located at 254 West 54th Street between 8th Avenue and Broadway in Manhattan in New York City. The building, originally built as the Gallo Opera House, opened in 1927, after which it changed names several times, eventually becoming CBS Radio and Television Studio 52. In 1977, the theater was transformed into a nightclub called Studio 54 by Steve Rubell and Ian Schrager, with Jack Dushy as a financial backer. They operated the company as Broadway Catering Corporation, it took only six weeks to transform the theater into a nightclub and cost $400,000 before its grand opening on April 26. The nightclub founders spent hundreds of thousands of dollars on professional lighting design and kept many of the former TV and theatrical sets in the process of creating a unique, dance club that became famous for its celebrity guest lists. Opening night was a mob scene. We were actually scared, Ian Schrager said. We had to bring all the security inside out onto the street. And then it was a matter of constantly scrambling to feed the beast of success. But between the extroverted Steve Rubell's cultivation of celebrities, the studious Ian Traeger's sense of style and theatricality, they set out to create the perfect party every night. It was the most magical club that ever existed, Nile Rogers of Sheik said, Disco's greatest band, in a telephone interview. Lots of clubs evoke a certain era, the Cotton Club, the Moulin Rouge, the Copacabana, but none of those did what Studio 54 did, where if you got in, you were a star. Not just a person. First, of course, you had to get in. And the crowd that showed up nightly led to Studio 54's infamous velvet rope and a highly selective door policy. The key of the success of Studio 54 is that it is a dictatorship at the door and a democracy on the dance floor, club regular Andy Warhol once observed. That kind of power gave the 54 team a sense of invincibility an arrogance that antagonized those who didn't make the inner circle. After a while, everybody had it in for them, Mr. Rogers said, simply because they wouldn't let everybody in. And Steve Ubell ruled the velvet ropes with an iron fist. To achieve the perfect blend of guests for his nightly party, he often stood on a step stool outside, selecting members of the crowd for admittance with a subjectivity that bordered on heartless. 
It's like mixing a salad, he explained, or casting a play. Doorman Mark Beneke, then a 19-year-old student at Hunter College, served as Rubel's deputy. We had the kid who worked at McDonald's next to some movie star or some supermodel, he said in the E! documentary. Whether they were dressed in a festive way or they were interesting, high energy, danced well, or socialites, celebrities, models, you had to bring something to the table. Opening night at Studio 54 was an unqualified success, but the days that followed were comparatively slower. The club's fortunes were reversed when Steve Rubell received a call from a fashion designer, Roy Halston Frowick, also known as Halston. It was 10.30 in the morning and the phone rang, club associate Rennie Reynolds told Hayden Guest. It was Halston. Well, this was big time. Steve at this point wasn't known by anybody. He wanted to have a birthday party that Monday for Bianca Jagger. Like many venues, the club closed Mondays for a dark night, but Rubel made an exception. When Steve got off the phone, we flipped into action to make it happen. I called everybody I knew in New York to come and blow up masses of white balloons, and I went to the Claremont Stables to arrange for a horse. On May 2nd, Jagger celebrated in grand style. Halston only had about 150 people. The best people, from Barishnikov to Jacqueline Bissett, Traeger recalled in a 1996 Vanity Fair profile. One of the bartenders donned a diaper and popped out of the cake, but the highlight of the evening occurred around midnight when a white steed was led out from behind a stage curtain by a nude couple slathered in shimmering paint and sparkles. The birthday girl took the place of honor astride the horse, which trotted across the dance floor while cameras greedily snapped. The stunt was one of the most effective in the history of publicity, as photos of Jagger on horseback instantly appeared in papers across the globe. It just snowballed from there, doorman Mark Beneke recalled in the 1998 E! documentary. The studio opened on a Tuesday. The next couple of nights weren't as busy, but that picture started the ball rolling. It was that soon. Michael Jackson wandered into a television interview that the club's co-owner, Steve Rubell, is doing. Asked what it is that he likes about Studio 54, a shockingly relaxed and smiling Jackson says, I like the atmosphere, the feeling, the excitement. It's where you come when you want to escape. When you dance here, you're just free. Frequent regulars at Studio 54 included Andy Warhol, Liza Minnelli, Bianca Jagger, Elizabeth Taylor, Halston, Mick Jagger, Jerry Hall, Diana Ross Jackie Kennedy Onassis Dion von Furstenberg and many other celebrities.
Under the direction of the talent producer, Billy Amato Smith, performers at Studio 54 during its first few years of operation included Grace Jones, Donna Summer, Stevie Wonder, James Brown, Gloria Gaynor, Sylvester, Amy Stewart, Stephanie Mills, The Ritchie Family, Village People. Billy Ocean, Anita Ward, Two Tons of Fun. Jocelyn Brown, Cheryl Lynn, Jean Carn. Claudia Barry, Klaus Nomi, and Linda Clifford.
December 1978, Rubel was quoted in the city's newspapers as saying that Studio 54 had made seven million dollars in its first year and only the Mafia made more money. This got the attention of the IRS. Shortly thereafter, the nightclub was raided. Bell and Traeger were arrested for skimming $2.5 million. In 1980, the club shut down after its founders were convicted for evading taxes. They sold the club to Mark Fleischman. Studio 54 closed with a final party on the night of February 2nd and 3rd, 1980, when Diana Ross and Liza Minnelli serenaded Rubel and Traeger. And the rest, my friends, is history.